So good afternoon to you all, and it's a privilege to be here today and to get a chance to speak about innovation and how digital technologies are changing the Indian pharmaceutical uh, industry. I want to extend my sincere apologies for not being there in person and the inconvenience caused. Uh, there's another visit that coincided with this event, but I'm very grateful for the opportunity to share this pre-recorded presentation to you. Uh, the way we conduct our business has changed with dig digital technologies and people now have more power than ever before to complete the task more quickly, more accurately, and more effectively. And actually, this is a topic that I would have loved to have been there myself, uh, but I'm sure, and I'm sure that you, know, you would have loved to engage uh, with me as also on this. Hopefully, the recorded video and my team who's there in person is able to do justice uh, uh, to this. So we started uh, on this journey of digitization several years back, but only as recently as three years ago, we decided to really accelerate our digital adoption. We started with setting a very bold aspiration for ourselves. And our aspiration was to create plants of the futures within CIPLA that would have uh, rewired plant operations with upgraded technologies that reduce people dependence. Uh, it would have data-driven decision-making and performance enhancement that is enabled through Industry 4.0 applications on digital and advanced analytics. And it will have digitally native skills and capabilities, both by upgrading existing roles as well as by adding new capabilities. As an overall outcome from this new way of working, we also aspire to achieve the, uh, the global top quartile in performance and operations. And I believe that this is the only way to meet uh, the demands of low cost flexibility and reliability. We've actually come a long way since we set ourselves this aspiration. We've uh, rapidly enabled 24 facilities in our network with digital uh, analytics and automation. And uh, through this, we are seeing the emergence of a new digital enabled way of working in our factories as a result of which we are already starting to unlock performance like never before. And under this journey, setting up the foundational backbone was very critical for us. And we did this in two parts. The first was to set up a future-proof enterprise-wide data technology backbone for all our analytics work across the network. And the second was to set up an organization of digital natives, which not only involved infusing new um, data science talent into CIPLA, but also upgrading the existing business leaders. And this actually allowed us to deploy digital analytics and automation at scale across our network. This was the core of letting us use our data effectively and accelerate our performance. So we deployed 40, more than 40 digital and advanced uh, analytics use cases across our network. And smart automation was another part of our journey. We deployed more than 30 value-backed uh, smart automation applications across our network. For example, uh, the process uh, analytical tools to enhance insights about our product quality or uh, the automatic um, case uh, packing machines that reduce both the people required as well as minimize error. And as a result of um, this, one of our facilities became one of the two first two Asian pharma companies to be accredited a digital lighthouse by the World Economic Forum. So at CIPLA, we have leapfrogged our transformation by setting up best-in-class, strong data tech bone spanning PANS network. And as we did this, we kept a very strong eye future-proofing our architecture. This meant not only planned obsolescence of some of our legacy systems, but also ensuring that our architecture is modular and flexible to allow technology blocks to be integrated or plugged into in the future. Another important aspect for us was to focus on our operating technologies. And uh, as there were three critical parts to this. We connected more than 90%, approximately more than 270 critical manufacturing equipment to collect near real-time data. And then this data is being processed and transferred further to a cloud through a site-wide uh, site edge node, uh, which, was, uh, which was deployed. And then this network-wide cloud data, uh, data lake uh, that was established uh, to facilitate the uh, near real-time data ingestion into our um, AA models and decision-making. 
An important outcome of uh, this was just the sheer amount of data that we were now able to feed into our decision making in the network. So traditionally, pharma organizations use less than 10% of the captured data for decision making. And due to these, uh, you know, due to these foundational interventions, we're now able to leverage more than 90% of all our operations data effectively. And as I look back on this journey, this did not happen overnight. It took us uh, two to three years together after months and years of careful planning and execution. Now, getting the right capabilities and talent to enable this effort was another really important enabler for us. It was important for us to address two aspects to truly embrace uh, digital and uh, advanced analytics enabled way of working in operations. The first was onboarding uh, new skills and capability uh, that was now going to be able to handle big data, which traditionally was not part of a core DNA in pharma operations. For example, data scientists who can perform advanced statistical analysis and computing to identify trends and insights that we were historically unable to do, or the data engineers that were able to integrate and manage complex data pipelines of the different IT and OT sources. And second is the capability building and upskilling the current force, uh, workforce, right? Uh, on how to leverage data and solving, uh, solving these operations. So it, it, let me talk a little more about the first one because I believe that this is a critical area uh, in developing a digitally native organization. So there were two aspects. It's not just about onboarding new skills and capabilities. It's also about the retention of uh, these, uh, these resources. Because as I mentioned that these roles have never been traditionally part of operations, and hence it was very necessary for us to recruit this pool of talent from uh, externally. Uh, and this wasn't easy either because uh, this pool of talent is in very high demand across the industries, given the rise in, in digital and analytics adoption globally. And, um, you know, traditionally, and second, like I said, was retention of talent. Equally, uh, equally important is to ensure that this talent is energized and motivated over a period of time. So both these foundational enablers actually allowed us the capability to imbibe Industry 4.0 applications at scale across our network. And uh, as I said before, we deployed 40 digital uh, and advanced analytic ap applications throughout the network. And as we, as we did this, we looked at the full spectrum of business problems spanning from quality, productivity, cost, delivery, and even environmental sustainability to ensure that we are unlocking uh, the performance holistically in line with our aspirations. Let me share with you uh, a few of the use cases that we had a lot of value with. So first is on quality. What we saw is that um, we, you could, we could now use advanced analytics to drive yield and product robustness across our network. And with this effort that we started about more than a year ago, this has led to about 2x to 3x improvement in our process capability across the network and with about 20 to 30% reduction in our yield losses. Even on productivity, uh, I can give you two use cases on productivity. We used uh, the advanced uh, uh, analytics led machine uh, efficiency enhancement. So most of our machine operations today are judgment driven, right? with significant reliance on the skills of operators. But now with the use of uh, AA, we made a deliberate shift towards data-backed uh, prescribed parameters for the machines, which allowed us to unlock more than 30% manufacturing efficiencies in priority areas. And the second was on the dynamic work allocation. So historically, we've been very dependent upon manual demand forecasting, production planning, and manpower allocation, resulting in low efficiencies in our operation. But now through this effort of digitization, 
uh, we we got a uh, we led a digital and analytics led integrated um, material machine manpower planning leveraging the granular digital production plans uh, work uh, force biometrics area manning norms and individual uh, uh, individual level skill mapping to unlock the plant productivity now if i think about it one of the things that i'm really proud of as we did this was how the work life of our people transformed and let me share with you some few transformative shifts that we saw in our own people so first was on scheduling and work allocation as we moved on to an automated real time scheduling uh, uh, you know we we could we could handle the uncertainties and the the, the demand surges much better than we could do in the past the experience of our operators and supervisors on the floor changed from the time they enter the plant right today we have a fully digital work allocation tool that interfaces with their biometrics uh, with the training records and actually allocates only valid trained operators to the machine for that day so now there is never an error of lapse of training period and work allocation um the next one is that uh, you know our machine operations has moved to smart automation enabled and advanced analytics prescribed way of working instead of relying on the operator judgment and experience and this also has ensured accuracy in machine handling and has reduced uh, the operator time the the time that the operator spends in, in setting up the machines etc so in the long term i believe that these changes will drive one important shift for us as an industry so manufacturing used to be an art as much as a science and this will now shift rapidly uh, to a more mechatronic approach with with data driven decision making and a tested and standardized approach towards uh, day to day operations now if i reflect on our journey right i strongly believe that this is a journey that requires resilience the aim is not Uh, to avail low hanging benefits but to build strong industry leading institutions that will leave behind a century long legacies in their wake uh, i am sure that uh, you know many of you are considering or are already on this trip uh, but as i think about it over the next decade there will be two types of businesses one type of business that's one set of companies that will be leading the market because they're using digital advanced analytics and artificial intelligence in their in the regular manufacturing process and the others who haven't adopted to this will either kind of shrink or find it uh, very uh, challenging to remain competitive now for those of for those of you who are thinking about cost levers through analytics and automation adoption i wanted to uh, i wanted to share a few questions that i believe you should ask yourself as leaders uh, of this change uh, and also why some of these are really relevant so to start with i would say that there are three big questions in the short term that you should ask yourself today right the first is how bold is your aspiration from end to end operations irrespective of how large or small your organization is if you restrict yourself to making incremental changes the current ways of thinking and working will never truly transform the second question are you using all the data that's being generated effectively in my experience there's always enough data but we're just not utilizing it effectively and actually data availability is not an unsurmountable issue right even a simple batch record data can be digitized and analyzed with advanced algorithms in a short few weeks to make sharp regular recommendations on product robustness and the third question is are there any big stakeholders that are still sitting on the fence i think it is very critical to have the entire leadership on board and role model this initiative you need to bring all of them into the fold of this transformation and then for a uh, you know for a, a little longer term there are another set of three big questions you have to ask as fundamentals to ensuring a successful industry 4.0 transformation The first question for the long term is do you have the right talent to lead you through this journey 
you will need a sharp focus on onboarding new skills and capabilities for such an effort, such as data scientists or data engineers. However, it is also very important that you have to keep upskilling your current leadership, else the ways of working internally will never really change. The second question for the long term is, are you taking clear value-backed view of all your investments into digital? It's very important that you're not making investments just for the sake of digital adoption or digitization. Do not invest for the sake of technology. This journey is not inexpensive, but real success comes when you take a strong value-backed view to any and every investment that is made. For example, even at CIPLA, we kept a very strong 24 to 30 month payback view on all the digital investments we've made so far. And the third question for the long term is, are you set up structurally in your organization to fail fast? Failing is not a bad thing. Failing is a learning step, but you must ensure that you fail fast. Agile learning and failing cycles are core to digital transformations. And lastly, across all investments, while there has been a significant direct value impact, there are other, other substantial benefits that we've accrued. For example, we have de-risked about 30% of our global revenues through analytics uh, insight-led uh, product robustness enhancement. There's one other thing that I believe which is very important is transformation towards a digital culture starts with the organization's leaders. Over time, organizations become shadows of their leaders. And for this, it's critical for leaders to do a couple of things to ensure sustainability of change. One, be purposeful in your role modeling across the organization. Two, enable personal change by unfreezing existing habits to adopt new ways of work. Three, drive broad-based engagement across the organization. That is, you cascade the culture across all levels of the organization. I, I'm personally actually very excited with the different possibilities that data and technology can unlock for our industry. We've had, and, and these are beyond just direct benefits, right? We've experienced this across our journey in the last three years at CIPLA. If I look at benefits, uh, you know, uh, we, if I look at benefits beyond, uh, uh, you can see the impact across a broader ecosystem. So when an industry progresses, it empowers the entire ecosystem in which it participates. And at CIPLA, we hope to empower the larger ecosystems of our partners and vendors as well through our effort. And then the impact is also beyond just numbers, such as environment sustainability, which has broader benefits for the industry. So going forward, I do believe that uh, digital technologies will continue to disrupt the industry in widely exciting and extremely unpredictable, uh, unpredictable. Uh, unpredictable ways. Uh, we have definitely accrued a lot of benefits out of it, and I would encourage all of you, uh, you know, to start thinking about it because I do believe that this that this is going to be the only single way of doing business in the future. That's adoption of digitization, adoption of using advanced analytics-led models to get better insights into your business. So thank you for your time and thank you for listening.